I don't know if you've noticed or not, but quick play isn't as quick as it used to be. If you check the third party websites that track weapon statistics and PvP, you'll see pretty quickly that we've entered a new PvP era that's dominated by weapons that excel in the medium to long range dueling distances. Where we used to have SMGs, hand cannons, and shotguns on top, now it's far reaching auto rifles and scout rifles dominating the PvP meta overall. And with Bungie absolutely insisting that the overwhelming majority of maps in the quick play playlist be large maps, it makes us feel the effect of that meta shift to an even greater degree. I mean, I'm playing Disjunction, Eternity, Fortress, all these huge maps on repeat. And speaking plainly for you all, the game in its current state is not quite the dynamic and exciting shooter that I fell in love with. It feels like by design, we've got ankle weights on now. And after weeks of feeling the meta slowly whittle down to what we've got right now, eventually, I got tired of it and I said, F it, we brawl. I swapped over to my Titan, I whipped up a build that's all about getting in the middle of the enemy team and causing chaos, and I full sent on it. The results were a lot of fun as the gameplay will showcase today. I encourage you, if you don't listen to anything I say, just watch the gameplay. It's fun, it's fast paced, it's dynamic. It's what Destiny, in my opinion, should be. I started out using it in Iron Banner and Clash, and then I took it into Collision and I really enjoyed it there as well. So hopefully you enjoy the high octane, pedal to the floor gameplay in the video while I break down the build and how I'm using it successfully in this meta. All right, so there are three pillars to this build that we need all working together in unison in order to let it shine and work as a cohesive unit. We need rapid directional freedom of movement if we're going to be intentionally putting ourselves in the thick of the fight and have enemies on all sides of us. Hey, we're going to need to have some movement tech that's going to make us hard to track and team fire. That's pillar number one. Pillar number two, we're going to need an enhanced melee mechanic so that when we're surrounded by enemies, we're not just gonna lose the beatdown battle. We need a melee loop that's better than everyone else's, and that is pillar number two. And pillar number three, we need a primary weapon that is scrappy and makes very short work of crowds so that we can stay alive when engaging multiple enemies. So we'll break down those three pillars one at a time, and I'll be sure to show the build in its entirety on screen for you so you can see all the components at once and I'll include a dim link in the description and pinned comment for your convenience. All right, let's start with pillar number one. So pillar number one is freedom of movement. We need to be fast, unpredictable, and most importantly, we need to be able to completely change the direction that we're moving in on the fly. There are two things in our build that are gonna help us achieve that level of unpredictability with our movement. The first of which is the thrusters ability for the Arc Titan kit. We are foregoing the barricades with this build. We're not planning on sitting still anyways. The thrusters replace your barricade with the ability to ground dash in any direction of your choosing. And you'll see me do it a whole lot in the gameplay if you're paying attention. I'll dash towards doors. I'll dash under enemies who are jumping. I'll dash towards teammates in a pinch, giving the enemy another player to account for. I'll do lateral dashes to force the enemy to make adjustments to their aim. I mean, the thrusters are so incredibly helpful. You can bait fusion rifle shots with it too, it's great. But thrusters are criminally slept on and people aren't used to dealing with them. You can bait titans too who are standing behind their barricades by running straight at the barricade making them think you're charging them. So they step through the barricade to shoot you and the second you see them step forward, you do your dash laterally so that you can have a nice flank shot on them now. There are lots of applications as you will learn the more you play with thrusters, but you'll see in the gameplay how I'm able to take on multiple opponents frequently by killing the first guy and then immediately dashing to throw off the second guy who would have otherwise had an easy kill on me. Now the second thing we're leveraging to avoid damage is the fact that Titans, some people are gonna hate this, I hate it too, but it's the truth. Um, but we're leveraging this core mechanic about the Titan, and it's the fact that Titans who are punching are nearly impossible to shoot. So if I'm taking on two people, 
A lot of the time, I'm gonna use my melee attack to pummel the first guy, knowing full well that my rubber banding is going to make it really hard for the other guy to shoot me while I'm punching his buddy. And when I come out of the beatdown, I have a full magazine because I was using my fists, and the second guy has to reload because he just dumped his mag trying to shoot me while I was bouncing around in my melee animations. And there are a lot of 1v2s in this gameplay that I win just because the second guy was forced to reload. And people watching, I always see comments like this, people watching are like, wow, this guy sucks. He doesn't even shoot back. I wish I could get lobbies like this. And that comment, by the way, is basically telling on yourself. It means you aren't perceptive enough to understand what you're seeing. And it also means that since all of us are playing the same game, we all get the same lobbies. If mine look easier than yours and you can't hang in yours, the problem is most likely you. So instead of blaming the matchmaking for your trouble, start asking, what can you do better in your lobbies? This will help you immensely. But that's pillar number one, freedom of movement and unpredictability. Let's move on to pillar number two, enhanced melee tech. There are two core elements here to the build, but also some fragments working for us. So first we've got the aspect knockout. Whenever we break an enemy shield, we get seven seconds of crazy melee lunge distance. So now we can punch before the other guy can in the duel and we can reach further. And that means we're harder to shoot in that animation too. But knockout also does something else that's crazy helpful. It heals us whenever we get a melee kill. So obviously we're taking on multiple people. That's gonna be a literal lifesaver. And that's how I was able to get that 30 kill streak on Meltdown, literally in the middle of three to four enemies sometimes and still not dying. I'm bouncing all over the place, regenerating health on beatdown kills, using thrusters to change my position as soon as an enemy commits to moving on me. All of it working together in harmony to keep us alive. So knockout is a huge part of what makes this work. It's also going to make us amplified when we get those, those melee kills, which helps us with mobility even more. We're gonna add a few fragments into the mix as well, which will enhance our melee play even further. So we've got spark of resistance for some DR while we're surrounded. We've got spark of frequency, which greatly increases our reload speed after hitting someone with our fist. We get spark of recharge, which grants us extra melee energy and grenade energy whenever we're hurt. And we're gonna be hurt a lot, okay? Not gonna like lie to you and say, oh, you're never, <laughs> we're gonna take a lot of damage with this play style. And finally, we're also gonna use spark of focus, which charges our thrusters when we're sprinting. The second major part of enhancing our melee play here for the second pillar of the build is the exotic armor we're wearing. It's the Syntheseps. Now you could use like the feedback fences here too, honestly, but I like the passive help that Synthos give. Whenever we have multiple enemies close to us, our punches will hit harder, our weapons will reload more quickly, and we get huge buffs to our weapon handling. It's just gonna be there doing its thing without us having to like queue it up intentionally, and I like that. Sometimes it's the small things all working together that keep your streak alive and help you win those close engagements. All right, let's move on to the final pillar here, a scrappy kill chaining weapon to manage the crowds. Honestly, there are a lot of options here, but I really liked landing on the trespasser for this role. And in the kinetic slot, we're gonna use, ah, who the frick cares? We're not even gonna use it anyways. The trespasser has insane kill chaining potential. It's already a great dueling weapon at base, but then you get that unrepentant shot up and running after a kill, plus tunnel vision with the catalyst, and you're ready to absolutely delete the next guy. You can do it in a single burst if you aim it properly, and then it will automatically reload itself if you do. Trespasser was a ton of fun to run around with here. I ended up putting over 300 kills on it in a single day, plus all the reload and handling boosts that we're getting from the other parts of the build made this thing so zippy and responsive. It was a riot to play with. And the reload speed buff that we're getting from a couple of other components of the build helps us be ready for enemy number two when we need to be. Reloads can kill you sometimes, but if we stack those reload buffs, we can make sure that we aren't sitting ducks in those reload animations. But I feel like this is one of the, the videos where the gameplay really does speak for itself. You can see how scrappy this build is. It's like playing the Berserker class in an RPG. It's high risk, high reward gameplay. And there's a lot of low risk gameplay out there right now, right? Stay on the edges of the map, 
protect that precious KD that literally nobody cares about except you. Get lots of assists and very few final blows as you tag people coming and going through the lanes. That's the popular choice right now, and I'm just so friggin' bored with it. And that's why this build has been my go-to for PvP the last couple of days. I used it for my multi-mock review, I used it for uh, my revisiting of the submission SMG, I used it for this specific build video, and I haven't regretted a single moment of it. But I gotta tell you, you gotta commit, or else this will not work for you. You gotta full send on this. You can't sissy foot around the middle of the map. You gotta just friggin' go, man. Get in there, start brawling, start punching, start thrusting all over the place. Yeah, you heard me, thrust to your little heart's content. I'm not gonna stop you. I'm oftentimes not even stopping to grab heavy ammo. I'll just let my teammates grab it while I push forward and keep the enemy occupied. So in a passive PvP landscape that rewards slow gameplay where scoreboards tend to have upper end performers with 20 kills at the end of a time limit match, be the one guardian who says, F it, we brawl, and finish with 30, 40, 50 final blows, leaving the rest of the cinder block for feet players scratching their heads, wondering what you were doing that they're not. Run laps around these turtles. It's okay every now and then to be the cocky hare making the turtle look silly. Embrace it. Be a brawler. Thanks for watching the video today. If you enjoyed it, would you let me know by leaving a like on the video as that's the best free way to support the content here on YouTube. And consider subscribing as we are getting ever closer to that 300,000 subscriber milestone. And be sure to stay tuned to the channel next week as we dive into some new content and I'll be reviewing a whole suite of returning weapons including the Blast Furnace, Elsie's Rifle, Luna's Howl, and more. Thank you so much for your support. Keep being awesome everyone, be warm and well fed, and I hope to catch you in the Crucible. You're almost there. Two for one. You captured Zone A. Two for one. Numbers, Guardian. Excellent. What can stop you if you fight together? Nothing. <laughs>